Hello and welcome to the uh, second video. In this video we'll actually get started on creating the uh, IK arm. So the first thing I'll do is just create some bones. And I know that I want my bone chain to have uh, a total length of 70. So I just want to create one bone which has a length of 30 and another one which has a length of 40. <coughs> and I also want them to be positioned and orientated the way I had them in the first video when I was showing you uh, examples of uh, the certain effects. So what I'll do is just select the first bone, go to IK Solvers, History and Event Solver, and just move the IK up here and then just delete it, just so it's in an initial position that I like. I'll now just go around and rename my bones, so this one's going to be the upper arm. This one's going to be the lower arm. And this final one is going to be the wrist. With all the, the bones where I want them to be and named what I want them to be named, I'll now create a helper. And I'll make this size of 30. And I'll just position align it to the upper arm. And this point is going to be called root. Uh, we're going to use this point as the object to globally scale the entire rig. So whenever we do any scaling it's going to be from here. I'll just press Control V to copy that point as a, as a copy. And I'll create three more helpers which are going to be used for uh, distance calculations for things like the IK stretching and elbow pinning. So the first one I'll call upper arm point and I'll reduce the size to 20 just so we can see it. I'll clone that as a copy again and say elbow point and align that there. Clone this again and this is going to be the wrist point and I'll align it to the wrist. So those are the three objects that we can get started with using for our sort of distance calculations or whatever. And I'll now clone this one again. And this will be called soft blend point. And I'll reduce its size to 10, just so we can see it. And the soft blend point will allow us to blend between the soft stretchy IK and the non-stretchy soft IK. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff created there, but we still need a circular spline shape or basically some way of controlling the IK, so I'll just use a circle for that. And I'll align it to the wrist and I'll make it a dark blue color. And I'll call this arm control. And just to make it slightly easier to select with angle snap on, I'll just rotate it 90 degrees with effect pivot only enabled. Okay, so I'm just going to go into select by name just to make sure all my objects are named correctly. Yes, okay, <clears throat> there we go. So uh, before we apply the IK chain, what I'm going to do is set, set up some uh, linking. So I'll select my upper arm bone and the wrist point and I'll link them to the upper arm point. I'll select the upper arm point, the elbow point, the soft blend point and the arm control and link them back to the root so that now whenever we rotate this everything rotates with it. And now we're ready to actually create our IK chain so I'll just select the upper arm history and event solver and create it down there and I'll call this arm IK. I'll link it to the soft blend point and I'll use the elbow point as the swivel angle target. So now we've got that set up. Everything scales fine 
everything moves around fine. What I'm going to do now is actually add the parameters so that we can adjust the effects and I'm going to add them onto the arm control. So I'll just add an attribute holder modifier which is by default blank and that allows you to add your own attributes and you can do that through animation the parameter editor here or you can do it in MaxScript with your own parameters and that's what I'm going to do. So when I add this I'm going to have a parameter called slide P, stretch P, soft P and pin P and I'll have uh, some user interface controls to control them. And this last line here basically says add custom attributes to the currently selected objects first modifier and make sure that you add the, the, the whatever this attribute is here so it's CA which is all of this so I'll just evaluate that and you can see we get the user interface controls appearing and now what I want to do is set up the uh, non-stretchy soft IK so I'll select the upper arm point and just go to animation constraints look at constraint and I'll create a look at constraint to the arm control and by default we get this blue line showing uh, where the object is looking but we don't actually need that so I'll just come down and reduce the view line length to zero and I'll also change the up node from the default of world to root and that means that now when we rotate everything everything's still fine okay so in the first video I demonstrated uh, this uh, soft stretchy IK and this was set up using uh, a limit controller and I said I preferred the trajectory of when we, when we use an exponential function and that's what we're going to use now so back to our original scene if we move if we move this you can see what's happening now the wrist is parented to the upper arm point and we know that it moves in along the x-axis in parent space to the direction that we want it to so what we're going to do is in the motion a tab of the command panel just navigate to the X position and apply a float script controller and you can see by default it has the current value which is 60 and you can see that down here as well but we're going to redefine its position so we don't need that what we do need is some variables so I'll say arm control which is going to be assigned as a node to our arm control uh, object. Chain len, which is going to be the length of the entire chain, which is going to be 70. Soft p, which is going to be the soft p parameter, which is stored on the arm control. Upper arm point, which is going to be the upper arm point. So I'll just select the arm control select the arm control variable and actually I'll click on assign constant and this is a quick way of assigning uh, node variables you can just put a dollar sign in here and evaluate that and it will assign a node that's uh, a trick I learned from Paul Neal we'll uh, click on chain len and we'll actually assign this a length of 70 the soft P I still have, still have my arm control selected soft P is going to be assigned as a track of animation and I'll just come in here and say expand objects and because we have this object selected it's highlighted in the list and I'll just expand that modified objects attribute holder and soft P there upper arm point is going to be assigned as a node and we can quickly do that again using assign constant and saying OK and now we actually have to write our um, expression. So in our expression I'm going to define two new variables. One's going to be called control dist 
and that's going to be equal to the distance between the upper arm point and the arm control and soft pause which is going to be initially equal to the control dist. But what we want to do is redefine this if a certain condition is met. And we, The way we do that is using an if statement. So I'll say if control dist is greater than the chain line minus soft p then redefine soft pause to something and at the end return soft pause. So what we're saying here is if the distance between the upper arm and the arm control is greater than the chain length which is 70 minus the soft p value which is initially 0 but it can go up to 10 then evaluate something. And this is where we're going to put in our exponential function and it's uh, it looks a little daunting at first so I'm just going to type it out and then we can discuss it. So it's going to be the chain length minus soft p times the exponential function minus another set of brackets control dist minus another set of brackets chain len minus soft p and that's all divided by soft p so what I'll do is I'll just evaluate that and it's saying there is something not right here Let's see, undefined to float, soft pause, distance upper arm point, arm control, chain lens fine, soft pause is, f oh, that should be pause, not soft point. Okay, there we go. <coughs> Sorry about that. So now when we move this, you can see what's happening. And the reason why this uh, this object is actually it appears to be sticking to the control is because we have a look at uh, constraint here, and then this the x value is just the distance between these two objects until the distance between the two objects is greater than the chain length and then we want to do something here. So if I just move this back, let's actually discuss what's going on here. And I have a Word document here. So this is actually the equation that we're using here. Chain length minus soft p times one divided by e to the power of control this minus and then some other stuff here. So if let's the, the best way to always go about uh, figuring out what's going on <coughs> is just by putting in some test values. So let's assume we've defined our variables control distance soft pause. Now let's put in uh, a value of zero. Then what we're saying is the control dist if the control dist is greater than the chain length then soft pause is equal to the chain length. Return soft pause. So if um, soft p is equal to zero, what's going to happen is um, if the control disk is less than the chain length, it's just what we're going to return is just the distance between the upper arm point and the arm control, which is what's happening here. But if it's more than that, just return the length of the chain. Okay. But then what we can do is actually in, increase our value from 0 to 2. And you can see now what we're saying is um, if the control distance is greater than the chain length minus 2, then we have a non-zero expression here. So what's this actually saying? Well, 
let's assume that the control distance is equal to 70 and that P is equal to 2. So that means that we're inside the actual if statement now because the control distance is equal to 70 and then it, that is greater than 70 minus 2. So let me see, where are we? Here we are. Then what we get is 70 minus 2 times the expression and all of this reduces to 69.2642. So now we're actually beginning to see that we can get the helper to begin to lag behind. So if I just put this to 70 and increase the soft value to 2 so we have the same values as we do in our example and I select this you can actually see that's what we've got. We have that value there. And now I can increase this and you can see it's lagging behind even more but it always stops at 70. Okay, so I'll just pop this back to 70. Okay, so that's us um, got quite far into setting up the control rig. Uh, next, we have to actually assign some script controllers to the actual bones themselves, and then we'll do that in the next video.